Hi, it's Miss Michelle again. I'm glad to be with you here this morning. Um, funny thing is I'm in the loft today. I had to come to work to do some things and so I decided I would video make my video up here as I reminisce and get to remember all the times we've had up here and long for the time that we get to be back together. So, um, so today our story is from Ruth, which is a wonderful story from about Naomi and Ruth. Um, Ruth is not a long chapter or a long book, so I encourage you to f go and read it. Um, so Naomi has, uh, is married and has two sons and her husband and her, both her two sons, uh, get married and one is married to Opa and one is married to Ruth. And eventually at some point, both Naomi's husband and her two sons both die. And so these women are now left with no man to take care of them and in the bible times at that time it was you were expected to have a man as part of your tradition and and everything like that and so um naomi really just wanted to go back to her hometown and have the other women just go back to their homes so that they could still have a life and find another husband and possibly have kids and orpa decided to go ahead and do that but ruth told naomi no I don't want to do that. And her response to Naomi is a very powerful scripture passage from uh, Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. And so Ruth says, no, I'm going with you. And so I'm going to kind of leave you with that at the moment, and I hope that you would have finished reading the rest of the story on your own, because um, it's a beautiful story. But so what happens in this is that Ruth decides to go ahead with her mother-in-law to a place she's never been, to a place where she didn't know anybody, um, but the only person she knew was her mother-in-law. And so she takes this big risk. And so um, when I thought about that, it reminded me a lot for myself of after I graduated from college, um, I ended up moving to Texas. I'm originally from Arizona and I had gone back home and then um, my plans kind of fell through and I didn't know what else to do. So I ended up moving to back to Texas um, and moved in with my best friend who was going to medical school down in Galveston. But she was the only person I knew. I knew nobody else. I didn't have anybody nearby. Um, my now husband, Jason was still finishing his last semester of school. And so he was hundreds of miles away from me. Um, and so I moved here and not knowing anybody. And for a while it was really, really hard. Um, I got, finally got a job and, but I worked with uh, women that came out of prison, but my job was from like the middle of the afternoon to late in the evening. And my best friend went to school during the day, but was home at night. And so we had totally opposite opposite schedules. By the time I got home from work, she'd be in bed or last minute studying and then go to bed. And so we barely saw each other. And so it was a big struggle for me. I went through some depression and, and things like that, that I had to deal with. And so I can only imagine what Ruth is going through in this moment of still choosing though, to go be with her mother-in-law, Naomi, in this new and strange place. Um, and so uh, our question for today, though, is, has, has there ever been anything that you've ever tried before that you might not ever would have normally tried that either friends or family have asked you to do? Um, and for me, that was when we went, I went scuba, uh, snoobing, which is, I know, a little different. It's like scuba diving, but a much lighter way of doing it. So you have a tank that's up at the top of the water on a float and you're still hooked to it. So you get to go down and so you have the mask and everything, but you're not going, you don't carry the whole thing gear with you. You get to just kind of try it out. And so I, I actually got to try that out. I was really scared and it took me a while to get used to it. But once I did, I was so proud of myself and it was a lot of fun and I hope to get to do it again sometime. So is there anything you've ever tried before that you've never might not have tried? but other people have asked you to, and you kind of do, and then enjoy it. What are some of those things? And, and then what has it been for you? Like who, who brings you hope and who brings you, can give you the light and the darkness sometimes when you're scared? Um, like for me in Galveston, when I was, um, not sure what was going to happen. And, um, I, you know, I still had my family supporting me. Um, who called and checked in on me, and I had also my friends and, and Jason. 
um, that helped be that light even when it was dark for me. But who are those people for you? And who might you be a light to who might bring hope to you when you're in dark times? Um, who, who might you be uh, that to for others? Um, those are kind of our questions for today. Because Ruth was that for Naomi. Because Naomi at first was very... She didn't know what else to do, and all she she was sad and um, kind of depressed that, you know, I mean, she lost her husband and both her sons, and she didn't know what was going to happen to her when she went back home, and Ruth tried to be that hope for her. So how are you the hope for others in your world? Something to think about. Love to hear from you um, and your thoughts on all of those things, um, but would you please pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you so much for always being with us to guide and love us, through the good times and through the hard times. Thank you for being our hope and light each and every day. Help us to be your light out into the world so that we can give hope to others. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. It was so good to be with y'all. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Hope to see you soon. Bye.